I think that a really important skill that you as a network engineer or IT professional need is the ability to use Google. It's impossible to remember everything. There's so much information. You can't remember everything. You need to know how to discover the information that you don't know. So it's not a matter of trying to remember everything. It's a matter of knowing how to find the answers. And Google is one of the best ways to do that. There's so much information. There's so much knowledge. Things are changing so rapidly that you can't hope to remember all the information. But don't try and remember everything once again. Learn how to discover or find the information that you don't know. So now let's look at some Google tricks that I've found really useful and that you'll hopefully find useful in your career. I'm often surprised the questions that I get asked. And I think, well, a simple Google search would have given you the answer to your question. It's gonna be quicker to look for the information than it is to write a question to me and ask me to look for the information for you and then reply back again. So again, learn how to help yourself by using Google. And hopefully some of these tricks will help you. So let's start with a simple one. I can specify calculator in Google and that gives me a calculator. So sometimes you just need a calculator and something as simple as the search gives you an online calculator that you can use. Now that may be too simple for you, but how about something like this, convert rack U to centimeters. So if you're not sure what a rack unit is, you can do a simple calculation in Google to do that. So what about U to inches? So 42 rack units equates to 186.69 centimeters. And here we've got the formula. If you weren't sure how to do a conversion of rack units to inches or to centimeters. Notice a lot of options here. We've got length, we've got area. So one that I always run into in the UK is square feet to square meters. I grew up with meters, 100 square foot equals 9.29 square meters. Or something as simple as kilometers to miles. So two kilometers as an example is about 1.24 miles. So very simple to do some conversions. So you can just use Google to do conversions. So convert something to something. So something like this, convert 100 miles to kilometers. And notice Google gives you that or convert 10 square feet to meters. Just type it in Google and then you get the answers. Or something perhaps more useful for you if you studying for CCNA, just do something like this, convert 255 to hex. There's your hex value. Or convert 128 to binary. There's your answer. How about this one? Convert 10110 slash 24. Notice 10110 slash 24 has a subnet mask of this. 10110 slash 25 has the subnet mask. That's pulled from a website, but notice didn't take me long to find those answers. Another simple one is timer. So you could start a five minute timer as an example, or start a stopwatch. If you just need a timer to time something, simply start it in Google. You don't need an app. It's very easy to set this up in Google. Just specify timer. Now, another one that's time related that I find useful is London to UTC. Notice there's no difference between coordinated universal time and London time, UK time. So this is the time UTC, this is the current time in London. But what about San Francisco? What's the time in San Francisco now? This is UTC. This is the time in San Francisco. UTC is eight hours ahead of San Francisco. Or what about San Francisco to Singapore? 
and let's do time rather. So Singapore is 16 hours ahead of San Francisco. This is the time in San Francisco. This is the time in Singapore. It's Monday in San Francisco. It's Tuesday in Singapore. Or Dallas to London. And again, I need time, not flights. So that gives me the time in Texas, gives me the time in the UK. And you might want to do it this way. So time, London, Dallas. It should be Dallas rather. There's my flight information again. Here's my time or, and let's remove flights out of that because I don't want flights. Here's time. Now I could also specify it this way. So time, London, Dallas. I get the flight information and just below that, I get the time differences. Now one that I've found really useful recently because I'm dealing with a lot of students is translate google.com. Very useful for translating messages that you get. I deal with an international audience. I'm not sure where you based, but I deal with students and followers from around the world. And sometimes they send me messages in other languages. Here's my Cisco Packet Tracer course on Udemy. And if I scroll down, I have received a message here that looks like it's been written in Russian. So I have no clue what this means. I can't read Russian or what looks like Russian. So I'm gonna copy that into Google Translate. And notice I can see the feedback that Maxim, if I've pronounced that right, has left for the course. So he's left some great feedback, so thanks to him. But I wouldn't be able to read this otherwise. Google Translate is fantastic and it's really got better than it used to be in the past. Here's an example as another language, so I'm not sure what this is. It looks kind of like Spanish, maybe. So I'll copy that. Paste that into Google Translate. I can see it's Spanish, and I can see what the review of the course says. So again, Google Translate is really good. It's got a lot better in recent years compared to what it used to be like. Okay, another very simple one is just to type IP address then you can see what your public IP address is. Now remember with network address translation, your internal IP address, in other words, the IP address configured on your PC may be an address like this, 192.168.1.something. So it could be using a private IP address, but here I can see what my public IP address is. So this is actually the IP address that I'm using on the internet. So by simply typing IP address in Google, I can see what my IP address is. Now, something that's really useful is searching for file types. So if I search for OSPF as an example, I can use the option file type and specify PDF. This shows me as an example, one of my first hits, the OSPF design guide. I could then download this guide. This is a really useful guide if you wanna learn about OSPF. So by doing a simple search in Google, file type PDF, I've now got a lot of good information about OSPF. And I could simply download that to my computer and use it offline. So as an example here, it talks about the shortest path first tree, it talks about areas and border routers, link state packets and so forth. So if I was looking for information, for instance, OSPF, link state types. I could search that way, and there are all the answers from a website, but I could simply specify file type PDF. Again, here are different documents. I'm getting information from various websites, so what I could do here is specify site cisco.com and only get files from Cisco's website. Notice all of these hits, and I'll make this bigger, all of these hits are PDF files available on Cisco's website. So I've simply specified file type being PDF, and I only want results from Cisco's website. 
So there's an example, is a description of stub, not so stubby, totally stubby areas. Here's a document talking about filtering with OSPF. Here's a document talking about OSPF address forwarding. So very easy to find good information by simply typing something in Google. Now if I search for just OSPF, I could get a lot of information, a lot of different websites. Let's say as an example, I only wanna get Juniper information. I could specify Juniper here, so must include Juniper, but I don't want Cisco results. So this means that Google must include that keyword in the search. This means that I don't want that keyword in the search. So plus allows me to specify what I want, minus allows me to exclude Cisco as an example. So again, this allows me to see information on Juniper's website and perhaps other sites such as Packet Forum or dummies.com, but it's all related to Juniper. I've excluded Cisco from that list. I could, as an example, say plus Juniper plus Cisco, and that gives me an example of how to configure OSPF between a Junos device and a Cisco device. So there you go. We've got Juniper here. I've got a Cisco config. So Cisco configuration, Juniper configuration. I could, as an example, specify site being juniper.net to only give me examples on Juniper's website. Here's a Juniper Cisco interoperability cookbook as an example. In this example, it's downloading a file, which I could then open up. Now I could also use options such as this, OSPF and BGP. So I want OSPF and BGP in the results. So here's a website telling us how BGP and OSPF interact or difference between OSPF and BGP, OSPF versus BGP. So and is like a logical and, they both have to be included in the result. I could also say OSPF or BGP. So the results that will show will be either OSPF or BGP, but not necessarily both of them. So a logical or. Now I could do a search, generic search for let's say CCNA this will show me a lot of information, a very generic search. It'll also show me information from a long time ago. So some of these results could be really old. You can see, I mean, there's 37 million results here. So what I could do is filter this, select tools, and as an example, perhaps Cisco have released a new CCNA, and I only wanna see the results in the last month. So here's an example, I'm seeing videos in the last month, one of my videos, here's Network Chuck. Here are jobs that have been posted in the last three days. Here I'm getting jobs in Spain, but perhaps I'm not interested in jobs, so let's do minus jobs. So I don't want jobs, I just want information about CCNA. I could as an example say I want exam information, so give me CCNA information, but I don't want jobs. I want exam information. And as an example here, I can see the exam cost, duration, et cetera, et cetera. And other options related to CCNA. Notice this video was posted by me in the last three days. I could, as an example, go back to tools and say only show me results in the last week. And notice that video is showing up but other videos aren't. So I could once again do a generic search and then limit information to say the last hour, 24 hours, week, month, and so forth. That's really useful. So sometimes I search for my own name on Cisco to see what people are saying about me. Nothing in the last 24 hours. So I could say as an example, what about the past year? We can see someone here talking about my quality of service packet tracer lab and saying something about it. They talking about the hexadecimal 
to decimal values in some of the DSCP packets. So I could do that. I sometimes see what people are saying about my courses on Reddit. So that's in the last year, let's say in the last week, someone was talking about my course in the last week on Reddit. So you could search based on time frame. You could also search by date. So as an example, let's say the last year, and I'm sure you don't wanna see so much information about me, so let's search for CCNA. Past, let's say month, sorted by date. Notice here, something happened on Cisco's website 28 minutes ago. Here's a Udemy wireless course. Here's a Learn CCNA 24 hours, posted 32 minutes ago. Unfortunately, a lot of dumps here, but you can see information that's been posted in the last month sorted by date. Another great option in Google is to view a cached version of a website. In this example, I am gonna search for GNS3 custom symbols. First hit is this page, but notice the website is offline. So that doesn't help me here, but what I can do is click cached and view a cached version of the website. This is a snapshot of the website at this time, so it's not the latest information. It's about six days old in this case, but I can view a cached version of the website. In this example, it doesn't really matter because the website was last updated on the 5th of December 2016, so that's a long time ago. So I can view the details of this web page, whereas if I just did a standard Google search, I would not be able to view this website. So looking at cached versions of the website can be really useful when a website is down, such as this example. So again, I did a search for something. Click this little option, click cached to view the cached version of the website. Now this is helping me during a recording. I'm trying to record details about GNS3, but the documentation for GNS3 is currently offline, but I can view that documentation by viewing a cached version of the website. So very useful. So again, if you're looking for information such as CCNA information, you can do a simple search in Google and find good information. A lot of information out there that may be useful for you. Now I've mentioned file type. Many other file types are supported so as an example, I could do file type doc to get Word documents. I could look for other file types, let's say PowerPoint presentations. And there I could download a PowerPoint presentation. This is the Cisco Networking Academy new CCNA curricula. And I could open that up. Obviously be careful just downloading random stuff off the internet. But as you can see here, this was released in May 2008. So this is actually very old. I wouldn't call that new, but um, there you go. You can download information very, very easily off the internet. Okay, so there are some of my tips and tricks. What are yours? What, is, what have you found useful when doing searches in Google? please add below this video your tips and tricks so that we can all learn from one another. I wanna wish you all the very best.